Kalu Kale. It's a happy, it's a happy high school musical day here in Texas. Hey everyone, Joe here from Action Night. Welcome to What's on the Tube, where even when I'm on vacation, I'm still reviewing TV shows. There's never a break with me. There's never a break. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Staying safe out there. Apologize to the camera if I look a little different. Um, I'm very exhausted. Um, also, um, I'm just. Just, uh, this is an angle look. I'm just not used to this um, setup. Also, I apologize. I look very unprofessional than normal because, um, again, I'm on vacation. But, however, um, the high school musical train rolls on. Uh, here we go. Um, this week, honestly, I think this is probably the better episode of the four so far. I think we're kind of back to a little bit of a, a streamlining approach. Also, I apologize. I'm out, I'm out of breath right now. I'm not used to um the outdoor air of texas because it's pretty hot outside so i apologize if this episode is um episode review is a little bit more shorter than normal um anyway going forward um this week um last two weeks i was a little more critical i feel like we were kind of like moping around not really getting to like the point of it um this week we kind of bounced back i feel like everything that we were tackling on um was um necessary to the story necessary to the season story and now that we're officially halfway over um we kind of have a clear direction on sort of where we're going it's still a bit weird um because again we have a reduced episode order um this season if we're gonna go actually get a full musical adaption we'll see about that in a bit but uh overall i really enjoyed this week's episode I feel, um cringy moments aside um i think this is the better of the four uh, better since the premiere and um i can't wait to see what the second half takes us uh, so let's go through the butcher recap and talk about this week's episode of high school musical the musical the series um, so we begin with, um, we're at a very, very well, nice done pool that I don't think a summer camp would normally afford, um, but we're there. Apparently the, uh, Corbin's coming back today and everyone's kind of wanted to impress him. So they decide to put on a, um, performance and a recreation of the HSM2, one of the more pinnacle songs of, I think, Sharpay's best song in the whole show, in the whole run of the, of the movies, uh, which is, um, fabulous, which also serves as her, as her um, personal theme post- um, HSM2. So they're getting ready for that. Um, they're just waiting on Hedge for him to show up so that they can perform it for him. And also, yeah, so it seems like Carlos is filling in for Seb since, of course, Seb's not here anymore. So we ha he's filling in for the Sharpay role because I guess he's the only one that can, can that can reach the the vocal bars that is needed for Sharpay. Anywho, so they're getting ready. Um, they thought Corbin was coming in, but it's, it just turns out to be AJ. Um, he's running a little bit late, but then once they hear a helicopter coming in, they just assume, oh, that's him. So they start performing. Honestly, performance-wise, look, growing up, Fabulous was not my um, was not the better um, of the HSM2 songs. Obviously, all the Troy and Gabrielle songs were the best. This was like, mm, it's, 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 all, it's all right. It's not, the it's not the best, but it's not the worst, um, in my opinion. So... After that point, um, there. So, but either way, the song is um decent. It's not too terrible. Uh, why does my cheeks? I gotta check in the bathroom when I'm done. My cheeks look a little more fuller than usual, so I'll have to get that checked later. Anywho, uh, moving onwards. So, uh, where was I? Yeah. So, they do the performance. It's not that bad. It's not the best performance I've seen of the HSM adaptions. Really isn't, but you know we're we're just progressing onwards here. Um, turns out it's just um it's it's all Jason Earl playing his his camp counselor characters, and that's all they were performing for. And it was like, hey, is that from the um is that from the the Ariana Grande? And I'm pretty sure like <sighs> the lawsuits, all oh, the lawsuits. Anywho, where was I? Yeah, uh, yeah. So. Uh, we head back to the barn. They're they're rehearsing. Corbin finally comes in. Everyone's in like you know high performance mode. Obviously, it's a big deal because of course you know we have a an actual high school musical legend uh, performing alongside our new cast. So it's like you know they're obviously a little bit on edge and they're a little bit like trying to impress them. And of course, it's the traditional you don't meet your you don't meet your heroes type ordeal where Corbin is not again. I'm pretty sure the dude's a nice dude. He's just playing an exaggerated version of his of his of himself. Uh, he's just acting like a snotty prick, and he's um, assuming the, he's just assuming things, and uh, he's getting he's just here for the show and nothing really more. He's kind of not really trying with like, oh, here's um, here are the Wildcats, here here's everyone else. It's not really he's much trying in my opinion, but anyway. Um, so they continue onwards. The performance goes in. Um, Jet the the kid, the the, the new guy. Uh, he he's a no show. Uh, and everyone's assuming the worst that oh he probably ran away he probably got um sick or hurt but no he just um signed out of camp he was on his way back home via walking 
again i don't know what they're up to and they uh he gets um picked up by a hitchhiker and then um the, the parents come to go pick him up so he's fine and also parent that gizmo has a crush on him and also I forgot to mention this from last week's episode that val is his sister so i'm like okay that's an interesting interesting dynamic um i wasn't anticipating that as well i thought these were just three new characters for the lore of the hsm tmts world but yeah, so Corbin wants them to perform one of the songs from the movie, and since I guess I guess Jed was supposed to play the 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 actual dude, they just have EJ swap. And also, in terms of just what's going on with EJ and Gina's relationship, and I feel like this episode is morally like, yeah, this is them like really thinking like a couple, and then also just having the sorry about that the love triangle continue in um to be thrown in there uh because so gina's mom is returning home so yeah so she's coming back um full time and apparently gina is a year younger than that which i'm like i had to remember that and i do remember yeah gina technically was a sophomore when everyone else was a senior was a was a junior aj was the senior so um so gina's happy that she gets to be home with her mom for a whole academic year for her junior year she's very happy EJ would be happy, but because his he uh, well, because I was assuming that he got accepted somewhere else, uh, because but he was gonna take a gap year so that he could still spend a whole academic year with the with with the Wildcats. Um, turns out that's not what his dad wants him to do. So his dad's making him go to the uh, private academy for um, successful people uh, up in St. Louis for the whole next year. And of course, obviously, this would be great for them to be closer together and apologies my foundation of, of where i was working if sadly crumbled in front of me um so yeah so that's a big that's a big um a big problem for them because obviously of course you know they're trying to make this work you know again like this is exactly the type of problem you get when you have a relationship and especially an academic one when you are there's clearly some years between you like maybe a year would be fine but then you know two years it's like okay let's kind of go pushing it a little bit too further um so but you know uh, ej's still like very not sure how to tell her because of course obviously they're trying to make this summer work and of course they're just saying like you know, don't worry like even though it might be a little bit di different like we're still gonna have fun this summer don't worry about that they performed the song i think it was really well done again i don't know anything about the frozen song so i don't i'm not really the best judge of character on that so <sighs> They leave it there, and um, they're trying their best to try and make this work. Um, but it seems like Corbin and his producer, uh, the, well, the cameraman, are mostly focused on what is the what is the drama factor of this. Because again, it's a, it might be a documentary, but they're I guess they're trying to imbue some reality show elements into this documentary as well. So they're kind of disappointed that everyone's trying to be no drama free, and of course, obviously, we got a lot going on with the cast. So they're really trying to figure it out. Even Corbin's like, "Why don't we just scrap the whole documentary? Make this a sh make this a show about the kid, um, about Jet, um, and how he returned to be the um, the star of the show." Um, but even that idea is kind of like not really, it's not really taken so well. So where do we go from here? Uh, yeah, I think, I think after that we split up. Uh, turns out Ricky's motif, and I actually like this the scene where. Um, both Corbin and EJ kind of put Ricky in his place for a bit because like yeah Ricky you're, you're not really the star anymore like you were the star you were the star but you know you, you, you still are a star it's just you're not really the main focus anymore well now you are but it's complicated it's, this is the problem when you get to an ensemble piece like some moments you have them some moments you don't uh, where were we on that yeah so um ricky's entire motif for the episode is apparently he has this whole bucket list of things he wants to do before he turns 18 uh one of them including hug a, hug a celebrity and he does confirm that the school can the um the guy the um pta member which was actually an hsm alum from season one is in fact that character it's it, well that actress it's not a character that the actress was playing which was like that's pretty cool uh, but she mysteriously vanished which like again that's a guest star role what do you, what do you expect but it's cool it was cool that they acknowledged it because they never really acknowledged it in the show we know we know it was a fun cameo but we didn't know like was it a, she was playing a character or was she was playing an actor it was kind of obvious she was just playing herself but you know you never really know what these types of things anywho okay so she's he's doing that and he's trying to find them the courage to hug him corbin blue and um gina finds him and they're joking around like it's the tradition like two best friends well two friends like playing around too, a little bit too comfortably when one has a relationship and by the end of his by the end of this episode it's clear that ricky does have feelings for gina which is like 
Bruh, don't. Why do you keep screwing over EJ? Like, we, we, I do not want to see another Ricky screws over EJ point. I really hope they don't do that because it's going to get a little annoying for me at least because I, you know, it's, it's just a lot to, it's just a lot to, to deal with every season. Anyway. So, next up, I want to say. Blah. Yeah, so yeah, it turns out Jed does come back to the camp um, at some point. Um, there, it's movie night, so everyone's kind of like just focusing on that now. And um, I know Courtney's trying to be friends with Gizmo. Um, same with um, same with Ashley a bit, and it seems to be working. Gizmo seems to be a little bit more open to it, but of course she's kind of focused on Jed right right now. Uh, well, they don't even have a scene in this episode, but still, they're they're still focused on each other. Also, forgot to mention, Nini's not in this episode again, um, which is fine. Again, she's a guest star, so we'll probably see her again in the finale to show up, or maybe one, two or more episodes. That's gonna probably what I'm gonna assume. Uh, where do we go there? Where do we go there? Uh, sh damn. So we pick it up in. <sighs> Yeah, EJ's talking to Val about just the whole thing. And, you know, uh, she knows about EJ going away to St. Louis um, for the fall and, and the, the whole next academic year. And he's still uncertain how to tell Gina because, of course, Gina's still doing a lot of things right now. So it's not really a time for him to, like, throw that into his way. But, of course, obviously, he, he is her boyfriend. So there really shouldn't be any secrets between them. So he does have to acknowledge that. Um, So Gina does not overhear it, but she does notice the things. And, again, it's a kind of a parallel where, like, what's really going on between the other sides of things you know it's a bit confusing obviously we know everything's all right but it's always the, the confusing factor of, of things so from that point onwards we head back i think we just hit the movie night i believe um yeah i think we just headed to movie night uh it was going to be hsm3 and i forgot like corbin they were wrapping up the documentary shoot for the day and um for the first time ever um we heard an hsm3 song on the show which again it will be pretty interesting to see how they'll adapt this song considering the fact that Nini's probably not gonna be on the show anymore. EJ probably won't have a reason to be in, in the high school anymore. So it'll be interesting because I'm pretty sure they're gonna do HSM three for the final season. It's kind of obvious by this point, but you know because if they're skipping HSM two, just doing these like really weird adaptions. Um, I think like, that's gonna be the case in that in that front. But anyway, so going back to it. So um, Gina also notices that Courtney's been a little bit homesick. Not not much of the likes of the actual. Um, the technology thing we mentioned in the in the last episode in the first episode but mostly because she misses her mom she just wants to be around her and one of her comforts of home was watching camp rock one and um so gene decides to convince val to put on camp rock one instead of high school musical three um it works and it was pretty nice i've only seen parts of camp rock i never f fully finished the movie and i never seen two so uh that would be fun i mean if we, were, if we weren't doing the whole review thing next year um i, I would have done camp rock in review but um that's probably not gonna happen it's pretty hot by the, by the way um so it goes well obviously there's a bit of set up tension between gina and ej about the whole you know lying thing and ej decides you know what i'm gonna tell gina because um it's right because it's just setting up with the secrets you know they're both mature people they can probably figure it out they're like yeah you know we can handle this we'll, we'll figure it out in the end um but he doesn't find her in the in the girl's cabin i'm trying to figure out if there's any other scenes before we forget i know yeah jed and val have an awkward reunion uh, with him returning and you know he's still not getting to the whole root of the problem i know he and ricky have a bit of a blow up uh because he's a little bit more self-guard similar to where, where ricky was back in the first season and um where was that where was it gonna leave me uh, i think that's it i think that's it i think that's all all that was happening oh yeah so corbin and his and his cameraman were heading back to the helicopter but they couldn't really find anywhere and they're considering going to disney and letting EJ know the bad news that because they don't feel like the documentary has the the drama factor that they're looking for that they feel like they're going to scrap the project and find a whole nother group to do this adaption and ej is like he's been trying to hold back at all the drama with everyone going on right now but he decides you know what i'll create the drama i'll, I'll give you the drama that you need and um that's shortly around the time where gina finds the um because she was looking for her script that was the reason why she wasn't at the cabin and she finds ej's script which contains his letter letting him letting uh, him know that he was going to go away to st louis for the next year and gina is a bit mixed about it, her reaction we don't really get to know the full extent of if she's happy or sad or like you know very angry right now but um that becomes a problem it's going to be a problem with her as we take off the second half of the season uh, because that's going to do it for this week's episode of high school musical the musical this year again i apologize if the if the hot weather beat me um it, uh, what i filmed here last time last year uh it was not that hot, but it is pretty hot today. It's like 97 degrees, so I really should have considered trying to convince them to let me use their space, but 
regardless. Anyway, I feel like this episode was the better one uh, of the four so far but since the premiere. Um, you got the be more of the better performances. Um, all the characters were on hot takes. We got Corbin back. We got Jason Earls back. We had a sense of direction. There were like actual progression with the plot. You know, new character revelation. Finally, I rec I know everyone's names. Finally, it still sucks we're not seeing Nini again. But you know, again, I guess they just really want to save her story for like the more important part. And not try to add filler where filler is unnecessary. That and Disney uh, wants her to make a lot of money on her tours. So I, I'm guessing that's uh, that's another case there. Um, but again, you know, I think this is great. Uh, I'm still very lost on what the direction is for EJ and Gina, where they're going to end up eventually. And I still don't get why, of all people, Ricky has to go for another taken person again. Uh, it is what it is with Ricky. Ricky's slowly becoming, for me, like, it's going back to where I was. Because remember when season one came out, I was not a big fan of Ricky. And so far this season, it, it feels like, like, Ricky still has, like, some elements that I still respect out of him. But it seems like there's just more and more things being thrown for him that it makes me realize, yeah, I'm starting to not like you again. But we'll see how things go we still have a whole half a season left to go and you know um next week we'll be back in our in my very well insulated um inter in internal set so it'll be happy uh, but for this week's episode i think it was great um i really i really enjoyed it and i can't wait to see if this the, the pace picks up for the next four weeks um so that's gonna do it for me i'm gonna give this episode um two two thumbs up um i my one hand is being used for filming so i can't, really can't do anything about that right now and i believe that's gonna do it for me today everyone so if you're unaware this has been what's the two from action it's reviewing every episode in the third season of high school musical the musical the series if you want to know what we're doing normally what's the two besides our hsm tmts review uh we're currently doing nothing right now besides those reviews um we have a runaways quick impression coming out very soon um next week we are doing a house of the dragon first impression i think that's what's, what's on our roster um and then also the the following we were we're gonna be kickstarting our star girl season three episode review so stay tuned for that can't wait to um get back into the world of star girl that's gonna kick off on a, a really packed fall for us we'll have an update about that shortly uh, but if you don't care about high school musical you're in luck we'll be back next week back to our normal setup um for more for another episode review and um we'll pretty much we'll be back on an outdoor set probably around episode seven around there so in a couple weeks so hopefully that environment will not kill me as much as this one again i apologize for the short episode this week but you know i'll, I'll make it up next week i'll make it up but until then um thank you again for watching for uh, if you're unaware, this has been What's the Two from Action X. Please subscribe to us on YouTube.com slash Action videos. Ring that bell for notification when our next episode reviews live. Please also ring that bell for notification when our next episode live as well. Please also like, favorite, share. Please also follow us on the socials. Um, but until next week, for all you Wildcats out there, I'll see you then. But until then, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. Um, stay cool. Um, unlike me. And um, see you next week. So, peace out. That was awkward, so.